Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to try to be wrap up so I understand I have about 10 to 15 minutes here. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the, uh, the industry, uh, our, our relationship to eco-efficiency coming from the aviation industry. There's a lot of uh, talk about uh, what, what role we play, and often it's in, uh, in sort of a, a not as friendly light as we would like. So what, I, what I'm going to do is start off and talk a little bit about the industry, our contribution, then focus on what Airbus is doing. What are we doing today, uh, especially when we look at, and one, one role that, uh, that I'm, I'm looking at today is the 20-year forecast. So where does the industry evolve to in 20 years? So how, how can we keep up and meet with, with the demand, but also keep in mind uh, eco-efficiency? And finally, I have a little, uh, little clip to talk about uh, some of the projects that we are, we are looking at today. So with that, uh, just the industry as a whole, uh, aviation industry, globally supports 50, 56 million jobs, 2.2 uh, trillion in, in global impact, so equivalent GDP. If we were to take the aviation industry and, and rank it like a country as far as size of GDP, the industry would be ranked somewhere around 19. Um, just to put this in perspective of emissions, the, the top 10 countries represent about 60% of the man-made emissions uh, uh, in the world. Uh, the aviation industry, depending on how we calculate a very simple formula of converting fuel burn to emissions, would be around 3%. Um, so that's today. But when we look going, f going into the future, one thing that we have to look at is, today we have about 4.5 trillion revenue passenger kilometers. So the demand for travel today, about 4.5 trillion. But in the next 20 years, that's going to grow to 12 trillion. What's happening in the next 20 years? We're having emerging uh, uh, economies increasing their demand, wanting to travel more. And therefore, we, we're going to see a dynamic shift. The last 40 years have been predominantly the advanced countries. We will now stabilize, and the growth will come from, from the emerging. Now, with all of this growth, what is, how do we manage our responsibility? What's going to happen with our, with our aircraft? with all of these airplanes flying, and how does that fit into the eco-environment? So uh, we'll skip these, or just some data of how many airplanes. So we basically doubled the amount of, of uh, uh, the fleet in service. But important to look at, and this is something that we often overlook, is if we look at from the, from the, the entry of the jet age, so about 40 years, we have reduced the amount of fuel burn per seat by 70%. So that's just to get to today. Now that, we can stand here and say, wow, this is really good. But that was just to get to the four and a half trillion RPKs. Now we're going to triple that in the next 20 years. We have to find new, new ways to even, even take and, and continue this trend. So it's not just fuel burn, it's also noise. We also have to, we're also very concerned about the noise of the aircraft. And you can see here in decibels, we're already down to 20 decibels uh, noise reduction with the A380. And we have stringent targets even going forward in, in, into, into 2050 for both uh, emissions and noise. If we zoom in just to the last 10 years and, and we take a look at the traffic growth and we look at the demand for fuel burn, this, is, this shows you what's happening today. And this is just simple, it's not simple, but evolution of technologies that we have experienced mainly in, in weight reduction and also in the propulsion systems. But you see here, in the last 10 years, traffic has grown 53%. We've had a, a doubling of, of the demand every 15 years. So this is almost a, a, a doubling here. But the demand for jet fuel, so the consumption by the aircraft, have re remained basically uh, stable. And this is also having the airlines operating smarter. So what, what's happening is, which is on one side good for the airlines, probably a little, little tough for us because the aircraft are being fuller, they're being utilized more. This is a chart showing load factor. And, and we, some of us can remember back in the, in the 90s where you could sit on a plane and most likely there was no one sitting in the middle seat. It was very comfortable. Well, today the load factors are, are up to, in some places like in the US, 87%, which means that the plane is full and it is quite tight, but it, it, it's, it's efficiently using the fuel that's being consumed because the fuel will be consumed on a per trip basis and this way it's getting more of the traffic, uh, traffic through. So now, 
talk a little bit about Airbus. Uh, I have a few charts here where I'm going to talk about technologies. Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, biomimicry technologies. Uh, we're looking at advanced propulsion technologies. But before we even get to advanced technologies, there are things that we can do today that we are doing today. As an example, take advantage of technologies that are existing today on the marketplace, what we call state-of-the-art technologies. The aviation industry has to, be, has to remain to be one of the safest industries around. Because it needs to be safe, aircraft, if you, if you compare statistics of fatalities between flying in the air versus driving in the car, we're talking about completely two different worlds. But to keep and, 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 and continue to, to, to have this type of safety record, you're, you're, you're not as um, forward accepting of new technologies as you would be in other industries. It's very robust. You, you accept the technology, it's certified, and then you likely don't change it for 30 years. It's very costly and time consuming. What we have done at Airbus is, and, and in the industry both um, is look at the technology that, that are available today and invest the resources to bring those onto the aircraft earlier, which means a lot of work with certification authorities, a lot of research work that we do with the universities to advance that technology so that we can bring it earlier. It's not just having a, 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 an iPhone or an iPad technology or wireless that you can bring it on an aircraft because there are a lot of other systems that, that, that it would disrupt. But just from, from an Airbus standpoint, uh, a, a lot of innovation to get to today. This is just a marketing pitch for Airbus, by the way, just 7,000 deliveries today. Uh, but then going forward, now we have to continue to look. Oil is, is, is unstable. Oil has increased 14, the price of oil, 14%, which is impacting the, uh, the airlines. Um, we have the emission trading scheme. Uh, we're working with ICAO. We have also within the uh, European Union aggressive targets in flight path 2050 that we have to achieve. Uh, noise regulations, as I talked about. Uh, so there are continuous new uh, challenges that we have to continue to innovate. So what, did, what do we do? Today, what we've done is we've launched an aircraft called NEO. It's a new engine option. Very simple. All we've done is we've taken the state-of-the-art state of technology and propulsion systems and we've put it on an, on an existing airplane. And with that, we are already be benefiting 15% fuel burn reduction today. And we can equate this. I have a chart here that uh, equates that to, to basically 15% uh, is uh, 1.4 million liters of fuel, so 1,000 mid-sized cars, 3,600 tons of CO2, uh, also, uh, f further emissions, NOx emissions, 50%. Uh, and then, of course, we get uh, more comfort because it's 500 nautical miles more range uh, or more, more payload, more passengers. And, of course, noise. So this is something that we did today. But we're also, these are the, the customers. So obviously, in the industry, there's a large demand for this eco-efficiency, this additional uh, fu fuel, fuel reduction uh, uh, efficient aircrafts. But if we look now, and I showed you that chart of the growth, if we put this into context and we talk about all of our objectives, this is what we, what we look at today. If we had no action at all, it would, it would follow the curve. And I think I saw a chart earlier today that showed if we just do nothing, we're where we're, we are with the, with the red line. We already know and have identified technologies that we can, we can start to minimize some of that effect. And there we get to a carbon neutral growth by 2020. But even that isn't enough because we have very ambitious targets for 2050, which is a 50% reduction. So we need to even take another step. So to take that step to reach our 50% our by 2050, we talk about biofuels. Then we talk about going into advanced technologies, biomimicry, uh, bird bone structuring. We talk about uh, organic uh, cabins. Uh, so so there, there are further steps that we have to take by 2050, but as I said earlier, because we're constrained by the safety, we need to start to invest today, and this is the work that's being done today to start to certify these technologies so they can be brought on the planes earlier, and they also have to be matched with the, 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 the timing of when you will have products uh, entering into service. 
So this is, this is just a list of everything we're looking at, the, fir- the, ne- the next decade, beyond, and, be- and beyond to 2050. But you can see a lot of what, uh, what some of what we've already seen today in biofuels. Airbus is spending a lot of effort on biofuels. We consider ourselves really more of an integrator. We're not researching biofuels, but what we are doing is we're taking our program management approach to bring the suppliers and the users, this community together, to ensure that, uh, that, that maximum utilization is occurring with biofuels. Fuel cell technology, obviously aerodynamic e- efficiency, reducing the weights, uh, bionic structures, we've talked about this, so biomimicry, which comes out later, nanotechnologies, seats that are self-cleaning, uh, how to recycle uh, uh, water on an aircraft. But something that's happening even earlier, that, that, that the technology is existing, but can really make a huge impact is what we, what we call the Cesar Next Gen, so the air traffic controlling system, the air traffic management system. Think about how much fuel we could save if you didn't have to wait to land or wait to take off. In many cases, you, you'll have a 50-minute flight, short-haul flight, but how long does it really take? Because you have to wait to queue, to land, so you might spend another 50 minutes in take off and landing just because we haven't quite yet figured out how to optimize the air traffic control system so that a plane can start the engines, take off, have a direct flight path to the next airport and land without having to wait. So this could be, here we expect to see a lot of benefits and that's something we're working on today. That's, that's here in the, next, in the next 10 years. And then, of course, uh, this is a, a more comfort, uh, comfort uh, for the passengers. This is a little video that we put together called The Future by Airbus. It's a longer video. You can find it on the Internet. This talks primarily about biofuels. concern for aviation, not originally for ecological reasons, but in order to increase range or reduce cost. Since the 1960s, commercial airliners have cut their fuel consumption by 70%, their CO2 emissions too. Now that these emissions have become a real issue for humanity, the aviation industry is well placed to find solutions. Already, a passenger on board an Airbus A380 uses just three liters of fuel per hundred kilometers. And we can always improve on something that already exists. Future generations of aircraft will continue to save fuel up to the last drop before moving on from fossil fuels for good. Hydrogen, as a fuel, is too bulky. And above all, as it doesn't exist here on Earth in a pure form, an awful lot of energy would have to be wasted to produce it. Fuel cells using hydrogen and oxygen from the air to produce electricity could never actually drive aircraft. However, because fuel cells are quiet and non-polluting, they will replace batteries and power generators for stopover needs. Solar power is the epitome of renewable energy. But even if photovoltaic cells hugely increase their output, they could never make a passenger plane fly. On the other hand, they could provide electricity on board once the aircraft has reached cruising level. There is a more subtle way of using the sun's energy. If you give certain algae, seawater, sun and carbon, the same carbon we're trying to get rid of, they start growing and yield an oil from which we can make a fuel very similar to present-day kerosene. Because algae require neither fresh water nor the land used for farming, biofuels made from biomass may well be key players in the future of aviation. Unless a major scientific discovery comes along and, once more, revolutionizes our way of living and traveling. There are so many possible futures for aviation. Airbus is committed to using the most responsible form of energy available to fly its aircraft. 
And that's happening already today because we've had flights flying with biofuels uh, today. So, so we, we, we begin, and then now the journey continues for us. Thank you.